A test statistic is intended to measure how compatible a sample estimate is with the null hypothesis. Recall that our null hypothesis is that Kian's IQ is 130, and we will begin by assuming this to be true. We're using a one-sided alternative hypothesis that his IQ is less than 130. We will reject our null hypothesis in favor of the alternative only if our sample estimate is not very compatible with our null hypothesis. Let's consider an average IQ score of 117 over the four IQ tests. How compatible or incompatible is this sample result with the null assumption that his IQ is 130? Over the four tests, he averaged 13 below his assumed IQ. Is getting a score 13 below what we'd expect unreasonable? It's hard to say. We need to know something about the variability of Kian's scores on the IQ tests. Without getting bogged down in the calculations, let's suppose that the sample standard deviation of his four IQ test scores is 10 points, and hence the standard error of the average is 5. Recall that this has the following interpretation. Typically, we'd expect his average IQ score on four tests to deviate by about 5 points from his true IQ. We can use this as a unit of measurement to standardize our test statistic. His average score is 13 below what we'd expect if the null were true, and in terms of standardized units, his score is 2.6 standard errors below the expected value. In other words, his average score of 117 is more than two and a half times the typical deviation below what we'd expect. Test statistics generally work this way. In order to measure how compatible a sample estimate is with a null hypothesis, they measure how far a sample estimate is from what would be expected for it if the null were indeed true. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, and visit our website.